Viewers of ITV's Emmerdale have seen the character of Val Pollard recently get diagnosed with HIV late in life following a holiday romance. Well, it's a storyline which struck a chord with Rachel Dilley, who herself was diagnosed with HIV just short of her 40th birthday, never imagining it would happen to her. And she joins us now. And welcome. Hello. It's lovely you. to meet you. Um, let's start at the beginning of this story. 2004, it was nearly a year since you separated from your partner of 20 years. Yep. You've got three children with him. Mm -hmm. And you decided that it was the right time for you to begin online dating. Yeah. You looked around, you have started having email conversation with a man, we've, we've changed his name, we'll call him Simon for mm -hmm. this. Um, what was it that attracted you to him in the first place? Um, it was funny, we, we just got along, we just seemed to click. And then you met up, we you met, met up, up, dinners. Went out for dinners. And it all seemed to be going rather well. Great fun, yeah. Well it was a, it was a very wonderful summer it was a it yeah. eventually ended up being a very intimate summer mm -hmm. and as you said because you were sort of getting later in life you didn't think when it became physical you didn't think about protection of any sort no and also I didn't know anything about HIV I hadn't been nobody had taught me anything about it so I didn't even know that it was possible to catch it so that which is interesting because there's been such a and especially around that time, a huge awareness campaign, uh, teaching teaching about safe sex, mm -hmm. that, that that had all passed you by. Yeah. And so the f relationship sadly fizzled out, which mm -hmm. was uh, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, and then you began to feel unwell. Yeah, v very it, unwell, very strange, um, swollen glands, sore throat, um, couldn't eat properly, um, temperature, shivering like a severe bout of flu. Mm. But obviously at that point, no, you would have no reason to link that with HIV in any way. So you mm. went to the doctors to speak to them and somebody did mention to you about getting an HIV test around about this time, didn't they? Yeah. And you just thought, why? Mm. Why would I need to do, mm. to do that? What yeah. were your thoughts? I just didn't know anything about it. And I know it sounds really stupid, but growing up, the only thing I'd seen was an advert on TV in Africa of African people dying of AIDS. And I thought it was a disease you caught in that country, mm. and that only they caught it. I didn't realise that, you know, a white person had ever had it. So I, this really was extreme naivety, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, totally. So they suggest you have the test, and you think, well, this is ridiculous. How can I possibly have this? That's mm -hmm. not what it is, but I would do it anyway. Yeah. And so you had the test, and what was said? A week or two weeks later, went back, um, got the result, and they just said, basically, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're, you're HIV positive. And what was your reaction? And, well, just felt like I'd walked into a brick wall and couldn't say anything. And then I think the next thing that came out of my mouth is, when am I going to die? Which mm. sounds stupid now, but, you know, it's like being told you're going to die. Um, but I've dealt with it and, and it's fine. Well, I guess this was like a journey of, of a knowledge for you as well, because you get the diagnosis and then you need to find out about mm -hmm. it because you knew nothing about it. Nothing and like you all. said, you just assumed that this was a death sentence, mm -hmm. when in actual fact it, it wasn't. No. And it isn't. No. Because once you've got your medication right, that it is something that you can live with for, for an awfully long time. A normal, well, a normal healthy life, they say. And what about, so, telling other people, telling your family, for example, because your three children are, are grown-up children. Well, they weren't at the time. They were, like, teenage, but I told them straight away. Um, they've, they've all been fine with it. My, mum, my mum's not here anymore, but my mum was fine with it. Um, my sister's fine. Not you're... everyone has been, no. though, have they? No, no, no. <clears throat> and what, had, what um... are some of the other reactions oh, you've I had? had? Some, a friend, um, her daughter had a baby, and she said um, she didn't want me near the baby, um, which I've... You know, it did upset me at the time. Mm. Um, Gosh, but then, obviously, she had no education on it either, so I understood her naivety as well. So you've lost friends because of this? Maybe a few, yeah. But I'm, it doesn't upset me. Mm. You know, if they don't understand it, then that's not my problem, that's their problem. What's the drug regime that you have to, uh, you have to be on now? I just take um, two tablets in the morning and one in the evening. And what about checkups and things? What do, what do yeah, they look for? Yeah, I get for? checked up every. It used to be three months. Now it's every six months. And what are they looking for? What do they check? They just check your um, your levels, your CD4 count, your viral load. Um, they need to get you undetectable, which I am and was quite quickly. Um, my CD4 count, I don't think is that high, but they're quite happy. Mm. Um, and you, uh, well, your sort of fear really is picking up things from other people in actual fact. Sort of even for you get, catching, picking up a cold or anything like that can have yeah, terrible effects. Yeah, more so in the beginning. I'm, now I've got used to it, I'm not so bad, but I wouldn't even stand, if someone was coughing, I would move away from them quickly. Yeah. 
I wouldn't touch handles on things. Because it can progress quite quickly and you and well, need to pneumonia thought, or something. I just you know, if I catch a cold, I get flu, I get pneumonia and then I could die. Yes. And I can't risk it, so I need to be careful. Because but... fundamentally it does affect your immune system. Yeah, yeah. It's destroying your immune system. And so um, f now, certainly new medication, new, th new drug therapies would prevent that from leading on to full-blown AIDS? Well, we hope, yeah. It's, that's what the, the aim is. But, you know, people are still dying. And what do they say to you about that? How does it, how does it switch from HIV to, to AIDS? Well, I assume, if you, I mean, I'm not medically um, trained, but, you know, if you get something serious, like some form of cancer, um, then obviously you've got AIDS. Um, there's lots of different things. If your CD4 count drops below a certain amount, you're classified as having AIDS. How does it affect your relationship with, with men now? Um, I don't really have much to do with men anymore. Um, I have one friend who I'm quite close to, but he knows. He doesn't treat me any differently at all. Um, but if I did meet someone, I would tell them straight away. Mm. I wouldn't hide it.